This lesson is on order of operations. Order of operations are necessary if we want to simplify big mathematical expressions. So let's check out the order of operations. We've got brackets. Brackets always go first. You want to do whatever's inside the bracket first. According to what's in the bracket, you start the process over again and look if there are any further brackets inside. Then you look for exponents. Then you can compute the division and multiplication. And you would do that in the order it appears. So if you only have division and multiplication all clustered together, like 2 times 3 divided by 5, just do it in order of left to right. Similarly, once you only have addition and subtraction left, like 2 plus 3 minus 6, you would also just compute that left to right. No need to try to subtract. Um, add first and then subtract if it was rearranged. Uh, just do left to right. You also have some rules to follow for when you multiply, divide, and when you deal with double signs. So when you multiply two positives, you'll get a positive. You multiply two negatives, you get a positive. Similarly for division, you'll notice that two different signs yield a negative, two of the same signs yield a positive. We'll see that happening in a few examples, but if you'd like further clarification on why this exists, do not hesitate to ask. Let's check out some examples. So the first example here, we're going to need our sign rules and our order of operations. So let's follow along. We've got brackets first. We want to compute whatever's inside the bracket first. So we'll repeat rewrite everything else. So we have 7 minus 3, and this here is actually a times. I know you don't see it, but there's a times be before the bracket. Inside the bracket we have negative 5 plus 2, which gives us negative 3. So now we have completed everything that's in the bracket. We don't have any exponents, we don't have any division, but we have a multiplication that we actually cannot see, but it's right there. So we can't go 7 minus 3 first, we've got to go 7 minus 3 times negative 3. So that's following then two negatives becoming a positive 9. Now we just have an addition statement which leaves us with 16. Let's try the next one. We've got more brackets and we've also got some exponents. So let's just review some exponent properties. An exponent is when you take it to the power, and that means the power tells you how many times you're multiplying that number by itself. There's a couple things to note though. Um, really pay attention to if there are brackets before the exponent or no brackets before the exponent. For example, if you had negative 3 in a bracket squared, it would be different than negative 3 squared. Negative 3 in a bracket squared, the square applies to the bracket because it's right underneath Therefore, you have negative 3 times negative 3, giving you positive 9. Here, you've got the negative just hanging out outside. It's not affected by the square. So you're just going negative 3 times 3, which is negative 9. So there is a difference. Be very careful with that. And we can see this difference here. So we've got our outer set of brackets. The square brackets are really just there for visual appeal. They are the same in nature as the round brackets in this case. So we've got brackets. Inside the big bracket we further have more brackets to deal with. This cannot be dealt with but this can. So we've got negative and we're just going to leave this here for now when, for when we deal with the exponents. 4 minus 9 gives us negative 5 squared. So, we have to keep going. Negative 3 squared gives us positive 9, as explained over here. And then we have our negative hanging out, and our negative 5 squared also becomes a positive 25. Now this results in negative on the outside, and now we still have to complete this bracket. 9 minus 25 gives us negative 16. So we have negative bracket negative 16, and here we can use our sign rule again. Two negatives, negative times a negative gives us a positive 16. Please note that these signs only work for multiplying or dividing or if the signs are side by side. 
Let's take another example. We've got division of fractions. Now, here's one thing to note. The negative in a fraction can be written up front, in the top, or in the bottom, and all of those are essentially the same. That number is still negative. Because of this, this rule where there's one negative, it's a negative for division. Fractions are essentially division. But if you had two negatives, that would yield a positive. So essentially, you, you can't say that one negative is two negatives. Don't fall for it. So we've got negative 3 quarters divided by 5 over negative 6 which is the same as multiplied by negative 6 over 5. Two negatives make a positive, and we can multiply our fractions by multiplying the tops and the bottoms together, or you can simplify before you multiply. So here, 6 and 4 can be divided by 2 to give us 3 over 2. So that gives us 9 over 10, 9 tenths. One more fraction example. If you're taking a fraction to an exponent, it means you're multiplying by itself three times. So we're actually cubing the numerator and the denominator. Now when you're cubing a negative, you'll have three negatives in a row all multiplied together. What do you think will happen? Negative times negative times negative. Two negatives become a positive, and one negative will give us a negative. Two cubed is eight. Three cubed is 27 plus two-thirds. Now to add fractions, add or subtract fractions, we need a common denominator. This should be review at this stage. So we're going to multiply this side by 9 because we want a common denominator of 27, which is a nice common denominator in this case. We've got negative 8 over 27 plus 18 over 27. So 18 minus 8 gives us 10 over 27. We can now try to simplify that divisible by 2 and 5 in the numerator, divisible by 3's in the denominator. That does not simplify, so we're done. Let's take a look at some more order of operations examples just to get you going on this. If you have any more examples, you can just feel free to contact me and I'll uh, gladly explain them for you. So here we've got an absolute value. What's an absolute value again? Absolute value is the distance from zero. So remember, if you have absolute value of negative two, that's a two. Absolute value of two, that's also a two. Two and negative two are all, both two steps away from zero. Also remember, absolute values act like brackets in our order of operations. So we need to compute whatever's inside first and then take the absolute value of that component. So we've got negative 5 minus 16 divided by 2. We have to follow the order of our operations. We have no exponents. We have a division. So don't fall for going minus 5 minus 16 first. You've got to divide negative 16 by 2 first before moving on. Remember, signs are stuck to the numbers. The signs in front of the number is stuck to the number. So we've got negative 5 still hanging out. Negative divided by a positive is negative, 16 divided by 2 is 8. That gives us absolute value of negative 5 minus 8, which is negative 13. And the absolute value of that is just 13. Further, we've got some root questions. So same thing here. Square roots are essentially like exponents. So we treat them as exponents. We've got negative 4 up front. Treat the bracket first. We've got to compute what's inside. So essentially we're needing to compute the exponent inside the bracket first. So what is the square root of 0.25? It's 0.5. So 0.5 squared gives us uh, 0.25. So now we can compute the rest of this. So we've got negative 4, 2 minus 0 0.5, which is 1.5. Now, when you don't see anything there, it's a time sign. All these little rules to catch on to. Absolute value of 1.5 is just a 1.5. So really, we're just going negative 4 times 1.5. So 4 times 1.5 gives us 6, 
and that was a negative because negative times positive is negative. Lastly, we've got a jumbo question. See if you can get this one. So, when you have a division bar like this, it implies we've got brackets right here. So we need to deal with the top first, deal with the bottom next, and then uh, combine it later. So let's deal with the top. We've got negative 3 squared. Now this has no bracket. So we're going to be going negative 3 times 3, which is negative 9. And then the minus stays, negative 2 cubed. That'll be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which will be negative 8. So that's going to leave us with negative 9 plus 8, which will leave us with negative 1 on top. Let's do the bottom. In the bottom, we've got a root. Root 16 is 4 minus 3. Absolute value, 4 minus 5. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. So here, I somewhat skipped a step because I knew that it wouldn't affect the process. So you could just do the 4 minus 5 bit. According to Bedmus, we would be dealing with the brackets first. But you'll notice next up is the exponent, and the exponent is not related. In this case, these are separate terms. So we we can do some of them uh, simultaneously at some times, but I would suggest following this uh, in detail until you get the hang of it. So you've got 4 minus 3 times absolute value of negative 1. We need to deal with the bracket absolute value deal first. So we've got 4 minus 3 times negative times positive 1 because absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. Now we've got our multiplication, so we've got 4 minus 3, which gives us 1, which gives us negative 1. Now, look at that. This crazy big expression became this nice simple number. Finally, let's just look at a few examples where they ask us to evaluate the following expressions. All this means is when you see a letter, you're replacing it with what they've given you, and they're always going to give you the letters. So when they say evaluate, you want to replace the letters. And I like to use little brackets to help me make sure that I'm going to apply my order of operations correctly. So I've got 2 times negative 3 divided by 3 times 4. 2 times, and notice this is an example of where it's multiplication and division are all occurring uh, together. So you can just go left to right and compute it. So you could go 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6, and then divided by 3, and then multiplied by 4. Negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2 times 4 will give us negative 8. So you're just going left to right. This other one's a little more complicated. Let's just fill these in. A would be negative 3 plus B, which is 4, minus 3. And this is exactly where you need this bracket, this part right here because of the squaring. Remember, square, squaring with a bracket is different than squaring without a bracket. If you don't put the bracket and say that you're squaring this entire amount, you'll be off by a sign. So here we've got a, and it's a negative 3. So it will make a difference. The bottom is 2 times negative 1 half. <laughs> so we've got root of 4 minus 3 is 1 minus 3 times positive 9. And 2 times negative half will be negative 1. So we've got root 1, which is 1, minus 27 over negative 1, which is negative 26 over negative 1, which is 26.